Hi, I'm Alistair and I make escape room games. And in this video, I want to describe how I use 3D printing to create some of the props and components that I put in those games. Now, when you mention 3D printing in the escape room industry, it sometimes gets a bit of a bad press um, because escape room players can be quite physical. Um, you know, they, they kind of try to take components apart and they try to disassemble them and they can be quite rough. And 3D printed objects are, by their very nature, slightly more rigid and fragile and brittle than perhaps components made from other methods. But here's the thing, I don't tend to create puzzles that players are going to interact with using 3D printing. I use it to create other types of components that go in the escape room. So for example, uh, this sort of decorative basilisk head here. Um, this would be a component which might go on the wall and might have uh, a some sort of orb or something placed in its mouth. But players would not directly interact with it. So this would be perfectly fine to have 3D printed. Um, now you can see the uh, layers that the printer has created as it's created this. Um, but one of the things you can do to make it more rigid is I cover uh, all my 3D printed objects like this with a layer of clear coat, uh, so like a resin, and that kind of soaks into the gaps between the printed plastic layers and sets very hard. So this is, this is pretty solid. I wouldn't necessarily want it to be thrown on the floor, but in terms of just general manipulation, that would be perfectly fine, I would say, to use in an escape room game. And to be honest, if it does break, it's so easy to print yourself another one. Um, I think that's really useful. The other time that 3D printing is useful is to create uh, components and sensors for electronics and things like that. So for example, um, I use these little Wago connectors quite a lot to connect uh, wires together to make a little circuit. So let's say I've got a puzzle that's got four RFID sensors connected together. I might use kind of a little switch like this to connect the interface. And um, if this was an SPI interface, I'd need to have four of these, I'd need the mozzie, the miso, the clock and the reset lines all to go through one of these. And I don't really want them kind of just floating around in my electronics. Uh, so what I did was I printed myself a little holder for them instead. So I can snap a um, Wago connector in like that. That wasn't a very good example. And here I've got four of them connected into a little connector and I've got uh, screw mounting holes on the back. So I can put that inside my uh, puzzle prop and it just keeps my electronics nice and neat. And you can also create uh, custom enclosures perhaps. So um, here is a, a Raspberry Pi case. So this is a bought Raspberry Pi case. This would cost about eight pounds, I think. And it's fine, it's nice. Um, but you can't, for example, access the GPIO pins here. So what I did was I just 3D printed my own Raspberry Pi case. It's just as durable, just as robust. It's got some ventilation holes on the back and I can actually access the pins. It's much more useful to me than the bought one. And this would have only cost uh, kind of pennies in terms of the components of the plastic and the cost of the electricity. I don't know, it takes about an hour or two to print probably one of these. Um, but I've got a completely custom uh, uh, component enclosure there. Um, here's one I did for a, a D1 Mini, and I can put sort of a lid on that that just lets me get access to the GPIO pins on the top still. Or perhaps I want to have one that has uh, screw lug holes on the side. So again, I can mount it to a board just as I did with the Wago connectors. So there's loads and loads of applications. 3D printing, I think, has really become um, much more accessible to people. So I just wanted to describe a little bit about the tools I use. So I have a Creality CR10S printer. I picked this up second hand for about £220. You can get them new for about £320. Um, and I have been very, very happy with it. That's now a fairly old model, so I know that there are better, newer printers available. And if I'm totally honest, I got the CR10S because it's got quite a big build area. So it has a 300 by 300 by 400, I think. If I'm honest, I normally only use an absolute fraction of that because I'm generally building stuff this size. So I could have got away with a, a smaller uh, printer, which would obviously take up less space. It would mean the heat bed would warm up quicker as well. So uh, if I were to buy another one, I'd probably get a smaller one than that. 
Now, in terms of actually uh, modelling the items to print out, um, I use something called OpenSCAD, which is um, a free 3D modelling uh, editor. And it's kind of like a, a programmer's 3D modelling editor, I guess, in that you kind of have a code in which you define all of the parameters of your model. So I've got uh, you know, how wide I want it to be, the thickness of all of the margins, uh, things like that. And then you get a live... Uh, preview here of, of what the model is going to look like. Uh, so for example if I wanted to uh, I don't know let's increase the, the width of this model so I just put a new value there go to preview to regenerate it and you can see that I've got my new model there um, perhaps I want to make it you know thicker or whatever so you can change these values and see the update in real time um, but what I really like about this is that you can actually make these precise measurements here so if you have a good pair of uh, digital calipers and you're trying to make an enclosure for a case all you have to do is measure all of the uh, dimensions you want key them in here and uh, create a model now uh, once you've done that this creates an STL file so that's a 3d model there's one more step uh, involved before you actually send that to the printer and that's to use a slicer so I use something called Cura again this is free software originally made by Ultimaker uh, to work with their 3D printers but actually it'll work with any 3D printer and you import the STL model that you created with OpenSCAD um, so you can see it here sort of laid out on the bed of my printer and um, this will then let you alter the settings of the way it is printed so your kind of your modeling application actually creates the the 3d model but when you're creating something like this um, you know you can change things like the diameter of the nozzle the speed at which the um, plastic is pushed through and heated uh, the temperature it's heated to and you know if you've got a slightly more this model as it is should work pretty well actually but if you've got a slightly more complicated model that has kind of overhanging parts um, you might need to generate supports that uh, that will hold them up and those are the things that's done in the slicer program rather than the modeler um, but like I say both the the modeler I use and the slicer program I use are um, you know completely free to download and use you just click the slice button here this will generate something called G code which you upload onto uh, an SD card and plug into your printer and just click print and then you get your items back so uh, that is my workflow at least um, and it works for me and, and hopefully um, you know that should if you're not currently using 3D printing um, that might give you a little bit more of an insight into how it might be useful to you as well. Okay.